These last three years have been difficult for most of us. But like our role models here tonight, we at ABDN have never flinched from doing things differently, from believing in ourselves. Standing still has never been an option for us or for any of you there, really. And as times change, we have to reinvent ourselves. From those heady days in 1996, when we planted the seeds of ABDN, the Asian Business Development Network, as it was called then, to its metamorphosis now, to ABDN, the network of influence, operating from West Yorkshire, South Yorkshire, and now the Northwest. The evolution has followed our vision. So since the change of government, the business support scene has changed. And ABDN has had to reinvent itself, understanding fully that we have to provide sustainable, viable, commercial support to business. And you know, change has a psychological impact on the human mind. To the fearful, it is threatening because it means that things may get worse. To the hopeful, it is encouraging because things may get better. But to the confident, and that's what I hope you are, it is inspiring because the challenge exists to make things better. And I think we really must not allow ourselves to get into the rut because the only difference between a rut and a grave are the dimensions. Let us learn from that. <clears throat> you know, there is much to be proud about what the ethnic minority, the BME communities have done. Uh, and we need to be proud of what they have done to make Britain their home and what they have done here in inner city areas. Voltaire said that if there were only one religion in England, there would be danger of despotism. If there were two, would be cutting each other's throats. But there are 30 religions or more here, and they live in peace and happiness. In spite of the knocks it has suffered in recent times, Britain has thrived on multiculturalism. It has welcomed newcomers for centuries. It is a mixture of diverse ethnic groups, each with their own distinct cultures, language, and religion. It's a very strong message that I want to deliver, and it's come straight from the heart. I have never flinched from what I want to say, and uh, you know, like many in this room, my dreams, my aspirations, and those of my children are intrinsically linked to Britain. I have lived here most of my life, and I will die here. My children, born and brought up in this country, have earned the right to be as British as Mr. Cameron. So how, how then can my Prime Minister Thank you. How then can my Prime Minister fail to celebrate multiculturalism in this country and fail to heal the wounds perpetrated by government policies? When I came here to the UK, I remember years ago, I won't tell you because you'll be able to guess my age. <clears throat> you know, I came to a drab old Britain, devoid of energy and color. People used to go to bed at 6 p.m. You can imagine how long ago that was, you can guess. Now I wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning to cheer the England cricket team in the Cricket World Cup, and we still didn't do it. <laughs> but I think I would say that look around this room. This really is multicultural Britain, and this is what we need to celebrate. <clears throat> and now before I go, something straight from the heart. Um, whatever I say is always straight from my heart. And uh, this time it's a little personal. But I'm being personal because I want to inspire you into believing that anything is possible. And over the, the past 13 years, you know, through ABDN, we have endeavored to inspire, to stimulate, to lead by example. And as we aim high this year, I want to share with you the last stretch of my journey of life. Just for five minutes. <clears throat> and, and I hope I can inspire you into believing that the impossible is possible. 
because each of us has the ability to create history, to change our lives and those around us. We simply have to believe that we have in, in us to do with this. And the power behind this belief is faith. Whatever faith it is, I think cling on strongly to that. My life, you know, has been one of challenges. Uh, and I have no hesitation in sharing this with you because I want you to believe that even in adversity, it is possible for all of us to fight back. I lost my son to cancer and um, my life was full of um, ups and downs, tremendous successes and many failures too. Then 11 years ago, most of you know, many of you know, I myself was diagnosed with cancer. Given four years to live, you know, I enjoyed 10 years of a fascinating life. Then two days before last year's annual dinner, the cancer relapsed. And uh, the doctors tell me now that uh, it may be the end of the line for me. But can I tell you that as, I, as 11 years ago, I know that only God writes my destiny. And I have that belief this time too in spite of all the odds, I shall overcome all the challenges. I think the, the, the most authentic thing about us is our capacity to create, to overcome, to endure, to transform, to love, and be greater than our suffering. It is that courage that raises the, the blood of life to crimson splendor. So let us live bravely and present a brave front to adversity. So often, you know, we look back or we look at, cal at the calendar of days as merely a symbol of the passage of time. We forget why we are on this earth we forget that there is a reason for all of the pain and all of the struggle. We forget that we are put on earth to learn something. And if everything were perfect in this life, we would never learn anything new. We would not be able to ele elevate our spirits through the events that happen to us. And if there is a purpose in life, there must be a purpose in suffering and in dying too. But no man can tell another what this purpose is. Each must find for himself what his purpose in life is. And each of us must accept the responsibility that this answer prescribes. And if he succeeds, he will continue to grow in spite of all the indignities. So let us carry on looking at the stars and beyond. Thank you very much. Good night.